Preach your name. <laughs> Today's invocation will be given by Louise Keating. Let us give thanks to our creator for the gift of this day, the opportunity to spend some of that time with others, sharing accomplishments, goals, concerns, and problems in the supportive atmosphere and collaboration and compromise, and for the energy and the resolve to bring improvements to our tomorrow. Amen. Thank you. Welcome to everybody. We have a really, really nice crowd today to hear our mayor and the state of the city. Uh, our mystery item is on the uh, is on the screen. In case you didn't know, this was a Korean War era United States Signal Corps PRC six radio receiver transmit. Walkie talkie. This was the original cell phone. It was used by the US military from the late Korean conflict through Vietnam. It's a single frequency radio with a range of about one mile. And now if you watch the screen, you'll see this in action. It was on MASH. It's no fun alone, Frank. What is? Any allied personnel, can you read me? I'll give you my location, can you read me? Major, the other end of that gizmo is on the Fritz and 20 miles from here. It only carries half a mile when it does work. Any allied personnel, here is my position. Uh, there is a fighter plane approaching, and uh, when I say now, the jet will be directly over my head. Now! Frank, the thing's a thousand feet up going 500 miles an hour. By the time you said now, the plane was in its hangar and the pilot was in his jammy. I was just trying to help. Stop trying, that should help right off. <laughs> I thought you needed a little humor to start the meeting. And now Secretary Lynn and the Secretary. Thank you, President Greg. We'll start at the podium, Joe Montgomery. I have three visitors today uh, joining us to listen to the, to the mayor's uh, state of the city. I have, you guys could stand up, Jonathan Millay, our economic development coordinator, uh, John Scavelli, our law director, and Andre Dordia, our finance director. My guest is Charles Dudley. He is the unit commander of the Triple Nickel. Sandra Hall has a guest. Maybaugh with the traveling microphone and Tracy Carmen is next. My guest today is Catherine Trump, the Director of Economic Development at the My guest is Joe Avila, he's in charge of Park Maintenance and also the Shade Tree Commissioner, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> We need a shade tree uh, this guy. <laughs> Yoder. My name is Bill Arthur. Uh, he's our director of commercial and farm and wage My guest today is Jesse Curti. He is the newest employee at the United Way of Wayne County. Today's the first day. 
Thank you, Ben. That's all of our guests. Usually we have some youth exchange updates, but we're on kind of a tight schedule today, but we do have one announcement, great announcement. Azumi made the baseball team. Congratulations. <laughs> both of you, how involved you are. I know Sujit with bowling and, and numerous other activities. So thank you for staying involved at Worcester City Schools. Thank you. At this time with Charles Dudley, uh, unit commander of the 555th, please come forward. As you know, over the years, the Worcester Rotary Club through its veterans fund has uh, helped support the triple nickel with the purchase of equipment and different things. And they have uh, asked us to um, purchase an automatic external defibrillator, an AED unit for them to use. Uh, and we have approved that. And he's here to receive the check and say a couple words uh, about what the triple nickel is doing these days. Kind of new to me here. So hope you'll bear with me. I appreciate that the president, Greg Long, has given us the triple nickel. We are constantly in areas that we could use an emergency uh, defibrillator. And thanks to you fine folks, that's has been possible. The triple nickel currently has done last year, we've done over 400 and, uh, 405 military services, plus 14 ceremonies. One happens to be here with the big long, you find folks. And we're continuing to do what uh, our founder, Elton Warrior, has started. We're gonna continue with this legacy. So I thank you all very much for what you've done for us. Organization, the work they do is unbelievable. And, uh, we, we owe them a lot. Well, it's welcome to all of our guests today. Uh, Azumi and Suji, nice that. Uh, congratulations on your making the team. And uh, we got Charles, Greg, uh, Joe, uh, Cassie, Bill, Jesse, and John. That's a great list of guests. We really encourage members to bring guests. So at this time, I will turn it over to Joel, who will introduce uh, our speaker. Thanks, Greg. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce again, uh, Mayor Robert F. Brenneman today. This marks Mayor Brenneman's 16th year leading the city, and it'll be his last state of the city address in that position. It's been an honor to be part of his management team for all of that time. Uh, as Bob ends his fourth term as mayor, the consistency of focus on Worcester's well-being uh, as a city and his dedication to its economic base and service to its citizens has been evident. Bob's worked every day to ensure the city was operating efficiently, services are getting delivered, setting goals, establishing initiatives, making decisions. And, and looking back at Bob's 15 plus years as mayor so far, he's led us through a lot of challenges, which I'm sure he'll mention. Great Recession, 2008, 2009, state, state and local budget cuts in uh, 2010, and of course, COVID-19, 20 and 21, and all the challenges that came with that, both financially and operationally. But he's also led us through some of the strongest growth in years. He's maintained our economic stability through a lot of ups and downs, and his dedication to maintaining and improving, and improving services has never changed. His commitment to stewardship of public funds has been a priority and a guiding principle that's never varied um, in his time as mayor. A little background, Bob was born and raised in Worcester, grew up in a house on Oakley Road, attended Layton Elementary, Edgewood Junior High and Worcester High School, graduating in 1974, attended Wittenberg University, graduating with a degree in geology in 1978, and he taught science in suburban Columbus for a couple of years before returning to Worcester and founding Ponderosa Consulting an oil and gas production business. Bob is the fourth child of Jay Clyde and Lucy Brenneman. Clyde was an industrial engineer at Rubbermaid. Uh, Bob's father, Clyde, was mayor of Worcester from 1983 to 1994. Bob is married to Amy uh, Brenneman, daughter of fellow Rotarians Ted Sue Crawford, 
and two of his three children moved back to Worcester and all three live or work in Worcester. Bob served two terms on the Worcester Planning Commission before being elected to the first of two terms as a city councilman. He was elected mayor in 2007, re-elected to a second term in 2011, a third term in 2015, and his fourth term in 2019. So as of the end of 2022, Bob will have served the citizens of Worcester for 27 years as an appointed or elected official. So he was the first to serve full, three full terms as mayor and, and now the first four term mayor in the city of Worcester. I know I say this every year, but I think it'd be hard pressed to find someone that's as dedicated to the city as, as Mayor Brennan. I work for the city for almost 22 years now. I work closely with Bob for the last 15. I can say without a doubt that Bob loves Worcester and he's seeking the best for its citizens and, and businesses. And that's what motivates everything he does. Bob? Wow, I don't know how to follow up on that. That, that I'm about ready to go home. Hey, let's call it a day. No, I appreciate being here. I, it's, it's always a, a, a fun thing to do. It, it takes quite a bit of work to put uh, this together, but it, it's a, definitely a labor of love because uh, as Joel said, uh, this is my hometown and, uh, and it's a place I uh, will uh, head to the other side on uh, someday in time. Want to get started? I passed out to each table, or I uh, had help getting passed out uh, our goals list. Uh, this is the way I've always started these talks to try to let people know what we're trying to achieve as a city and uh, what we have uh, funding to make happen during each year. So they're all on your tables. I'll refer to them, but it just very quickly, and then tell more about them uh, one by one, so that you know what we're talking about. Um. It is a, always an honor and a pleasure to share our administrative plan for the current 2023 year. This uh, year's presentation is especially so for it is the last time I will get to share in a state of the city address my thoughts and vision as mayor of the city of Worcester. The pictures on the screen, the top one there is a string light over our northeast quad of the square. Down below that is the ribbon cutting of the new Ace Hardware st store on March 4th of 2022. Bottom one is Mariel Italian Restaurant and Liberty Bell Apartments. It plans to open yet this spring. The artist rendering of the new Lyric uh, Theater on the corner of South and Market Streets adjacent to this uh, city square house or a city square steakhouse. Um, it's a very en energetic group that we were bringing this project forward hoping to have the theater operating sometime in 24. So best wishes to this group and the, and the project success. There we go. These are the goals uh, and uh, you can read down through those. And, and uh, again, I'll give each one one by one or they're on your tables. To, to help you out. There you go. Our first goal is fire station one upgrades. Uh, we need to renovate and modernize the fire station one right beside city hall. Uh, we started with an architecture and engineering plan in 2021, hope to award a contract track to build this spring and start construction this summer yet and with a completion in 2024. The picture uh, to the right is uh, a parking lot we needed to put in place before we could uh, start the uh, city or the fire station renovation. Um, and uh, so it shows that we are definitely started and getting things moving forward. So I just wanted uh, to show that and so people know what we were creating on the north side of our building. Um, a $500,000 critical infrastructure grant was awarded in 22 to help uh, construct this uh, fire station. And our final, it's our final improvement to our city's fire infrastructure. Station one was built in 1961. So it's 62 years strong and, and still going. The next is uh, connecting Worcester with Milltown Road and uh, 
Milltown and Melrose bike paths. Um, we have two primary bike trails in the city and uh, completing the northern loop of our trail system will be this extension that we are adding this year and a new leg up to Smithville Western. Uh, funding for the Milltown Road piece of the trail comes available after July 1st of this year. Construction of this section probably won't get started until late 23 and, and then finish up in 24. Uh, we did get a, a nice state grant to help us with that. Um, Melrose leg of this trail is included in the Melrose Road reconstruction costs. So the leg from Smithville Western Road down to Milltown Road should be completed by the end of this summer or early fall. Our third goal of park improvements is made up of four different projects throughout our city park system. First is Freelander Chalet entry and patio improvements. Uh, there's a st steps and a ramp from the parking lot down into the chalet that are very steep and really don't pass code in this day and age. So we are going to be redoing those and then we are going to add um, uh, outdoor patio area to the chalet uh, up there on the, the level going into the chalet that should help uh, with uh, making that facility uh, user friendly throughout at least three seasons of the year. Clear Creek Park is the next uh, one with a playground construction project. This will complement the pavilion and trail systems at Clear Creek Park, which was dedicated in uh, 22. Thank you to Dick and Judy Seaman for the generous donation of that property. We have budgeted $125,000 to build additional pickleball courts in our city year uh, this year, and location is yet to be determined, but uh, that is a hot uh, button uh, entertainment uh, for folks my age and, and uh, uh, thereabouts. So uh, we are uh, adding more to the city in those courts. And the, lastly, the Christmas run pool renovation discussion and direction. OHM Advisors is doing a study on cost benefits of redoing our existing pool. Uh, our com comprehensive plan update by OHM will consider these factors in, in making a recommendation to our city. So those are the plans for, for our park improvements. Next is safety infrastructure. Uh, this is uh, our two different locations in our city. You know, we've been working on our downtown. So a continuation of our city street, streetscape improvement project in our downtown is shown in yellow shown um, on West Liberty Street with the main improvements on the south side of the street, just around the alley west of the bank teller uh, lanes at PNC. The improvement will round the corner in front of Matzo's and continue south on Walnut Street to approximately the alley north of local routes. On the north side of Liberty Street uh, will be improvements to the corner crosswalks. The second major infrastructure project on the right hand side of your screen will improve, uh, I'm sorry, is a needed improvement to the intersection of Oak Hill Road and Oldman Road. A needed uh, improvement due to the increased traffic load on both of these streets. The first time that this is the first time the TIF dollars will be used to benefit the public from the increase in housing. Our next goal, it focuses on our city utilities of water and wastewater improvements. Water production facility was constructed in 1998, almost 25 years ago, and has served our city very well. Water production load has increased since the plant was built. A planned way to expand our water filters was built into the building. This is what we were planning on doing is knocking out a wall of the building and adding some new filtering filter systems. By having our utility and engineering teams looking into it, they found a way to clean and refresh our sand filters while still handling the production needs. So this will buy the city some more years, but that uh, will be taking place this year uh, in, the, in the water world. On the wastewater side, improvements involve four areas that are much more involved. A thing called the headworks, which is the main pipe bringing sewage into the plant is 50 plus years old and must stay in use while the replacement is being made. Vertical loop reactor one and two must be rehabbed and improved. They add air into the waste stream to let bacteria do their, their job. 
Anaerobic digesters need updated, cleaned, re-tarped, so the bubbles on the top, those black bubbles on the top, uh, need those tarps need replaced and rehab. And then we have a feedstock uh, receiving needs improved. That is the, the feedstock is the energy that we can make uh, electricity or natural gas from. And uh, it's been down for a, a while now while we get uh, these new, new improvements put in place. The sixth goal is promote housing and planned community growth. Two important aspects of growth. Planning of the community growth is the 10 year comprehensive plan review and update that is starting here tomorrow. Pictures show the committee and plan formed in 2013 and 14. We have a 20 member committee of Worcester citizens working with OHM and city staff to review Worcester's 2014 plan, talk what needs changed or up need updated and any new development plans. They will finish by recommending a plan update to city council. The second part of this goal is improving the housing situation in Worcester. The map on this slide shows a new potential improvement area that we've been working on for many years, the Walmart lift station. We've just established a right of way which will allow the removal of this lift station and turn this area into a gravity sewer system, which is better for the city. This holds the potential for more housing and commercial development uh, in the yellow uh, parabola on, that, on your screen. That red line represents the gravity sewer that we will be putting in place. So this is a, another improvement uh, towards additional housing that I know many in the community have, have uh, been concerned with as, as we all have been. The seventh goal is exciting. Worcester is the largest city and population base per square mile of any place in Wayne County. Our needs have grown as well as our own in-house professional staff. We now perform many things that others used to provide as a service. We need our partners to understand this new reality and work with us to find what services, functions, and expertise they can prov provide to help all involved. Worcester has to grow but in a planned, methodical way. If we don't, our city will start to stagnate. That's why we do it in plan as state. We need our partners to grow with us. This can be done if we work together. The never, number seven micropolitan is a true honor for our city. We have been the number one micropolitan in the state of Ohio since 2018, the last six years. We should be very proud of this honor and share it with anyone we meet. This next slide gives you a basis for that pride. This is from Polycom Ranking. It's one of the nation's one, uh, two ranking institutions. The other is Site Selection Magazine that should have its uh, ranking coming out within the next few days. Um, you'll see that Worcester is rated number one in the state of Ohio seventh in the nation out of 543 micropolitans in the United States. So number seven out of 543 is, is pretty high in the list. The other Ohio cities that you will know are Salina uh, is number two, Mount Vernon, Wapakoneta, Sydney, Norwalk, Wilmington, New Philadelphia, Dover, Marietta, and Zanesville. If you are interested, Ashland is number 11 on the list at 147, and Finley, who we are often compared with, is number 12 at 151. So this is uh, something that is, is uh, well received throughout the United States. And uh, if we're on this list and staying up in the top 10 listing, that bodes really well for our community and, and any growth type of potentials. And our last city goal is complete the Dix Expressway and Melrose Road improvements. Uh, these, uh, these both are important road and infrastructure improvements started last year in 22. As stated, both projects would take two years to complete. Both projects are well underway and should be completed this year. Thanks to the state of Ohio for funding the improvements to the Dix Expressway. And thanks to ourselves at the city 
uh, for fixing and improving Melrose Drive along with the $500,000 uh, OPWC grant. So this, actually, the city taxpayers are, are making that second improvement go. An off-road bike walking path will accentuate the new road improvements. This is something that I, everybody wants to see, but they really don't like to focus lots of time on. But uh, this is stuff that we definitely look into as a city. Uh, we raised, had to raise the income tax from one to one and a half percent back in 2013. And uh, it has made all the difference in, in the world for us uh, as far as a community. The tax went into uh, effect on January 1st of 2014. And so you can see that all of those lines started going up uh, as far as revenues for, for that come into our city. The income tax increase to me was essential. It truly saved our community. Thank you to the citizens of Worcester in, for investing in our city. This tells you how the money was been, has been spent in uh, capital investments. The general government is in the blue at the bottom and water in the uh, orange and sanitary sewer in the gray and storm sewer in the little bit of gold at the very top. You can tell in 2023, we have many uh, projects planned and much of that is the sewer system and water system that we have just talked about. Uh, but general government is like the roads and parks and uh, things like that, that that take place. So uh, happy to talk more about that in depth, but if I waste, if I spend too much time on it, I won't get through this talk. And the last finance slide we have is just shows you uh, what it looks like uh, for personnel is the blue line, debt service gray, uh, capital transfer in the gold and O&M in the uh, sort of orange color. So. Uh, this is uh, what's happened since uh, I came in in 2008. Uh, in 2020, that marker is down a little bit. The reason for that is uh, not because we were doing less things, but uh, the money to do those things came from the ARPA funds, American uh, Recovery uh, Plan funds. So let's talk about 2022. Uh, we had put in place the Oak Hill TIF district with uh, the school system as a, a good partner for us. And, and uh, in February 22, city council approved the TIF for this area of Oak Hill and the schools. Infrastructure improvements begin in the summer of 20, or begin in the summer of 22. Ryan Holmes begins constructing their model home who Justin just told me uh, is going to be open tomorrow. Uh, to uh, talk to anybody that might be interested in putting a new home in, in the Ryan development. Um, Oak Hill and Old Man Road around about the design phase is underway and should construct this summer. Over 1 million square feet of new industrial space has been created in our town. Uh, on the top picture on the left is Worcester Brush and the new over 600,000 square foot uh, building they've put in place up off of Daisy Way. Below that is the FedEx warehouse that is uh, being built and ready to put into use off of uh, Old Airport Road. Number three is Daisy Brand who has expanded I think every single year since they built their facility in Worcester. Uh, and, and actually has uh, future years of uh, planned expansion to happen. Uh, Scheffler is number four. Again, those people have uh, expanded uh, amazingly over the years and it's our largest uh, in over uh, area of uh, building footage of any else, anything else in Worcester. Scheffler is gonna be adding 80,000 square feet. Scannell and Frito-Lay uh, warehouse is the last picture, number five. Uh, that is already in use for uh, distribution for Frito Lay Company. Thanks to all for growing in our community. Retail options. Myers is coming to Worcester and ready to open. Uh, national chain should complement the other grocers and good general goods stores in Worcester. I believe people from the surrounding area to come to Worcester to shop. Opening sometime this spring, probably within the next month or so. Uh, and so welcome to, to Worcester, uh, Myers. 
Spring Run, taking root. Spring, spring Run development, Ryan Homes, 91 single family homes that are being built out there. The development was put together by a local, local group of investors. They broke ground on this first house model home at the end of last year. The model home uh, sales office opens tomorrow, as, uh, according to what Justin just told me. One of the first boots on the ground housing development underway in our city. So we are pleased to have them serving the Worcester community. Celebrating new and old, Clear Creek Park opened last year. Uh, Liberty Bell Project had their groundbreaking in 22. Alice Noble Arena celebrated the 20th anniversary of that uh, phenomenal uh, asset to our community. And Bogner Construction celebrates 125 years in the city of Worcester. Uh, Beefo Brady's took uh, the place where Henry Station was and uh, are doing very well from everything I've been told. Uh, e &H Hardware uh, put up a, a new front and uh, uh, hardware business in the old Rubbermaid store. Caribou Coffee has uh, opened a place on Cleveland Road. It's the first based franchise in the nation for Caribou Coffee. And uh, lastly, uh, the new housing out on Noble Drive is gonna be a three, or, I'm sorry, three unit uh, tri, uh, triplex of uh, five different units. So 15 new apartments coming out there. Now Rose, housing development starting this spring, Lemon Development is moving forward. Plans are for 141 unit development with apartments, duplexes and single family homes. Planning to start building this spring. Lemon Development did the Danbury facility here in town. So I think they're, they're a worthy partner and looking forward to having them start construction. And this is something that we should never stop cheering about because we are so fortunate to have Worcester Community Hospital and the award-winning hospital that it is in our community. Uh, it's the eighth time, time, eight time winner of the top 100 hospitals by Fortune Meritive. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid five-star quality rating, which is the highest rating they give. Stroke Gold Quality Achievement Award. If you are, or someone you know is having a stroke, get to Worcester Community Hospital as fast as you can because we have the fastest balloon, uh, needle to balloon time of anywhere in the state. Ohio State University uh, Medical Center works with us and we even are better than what they can do a balloon to uh, open up a stroke. So uh, Worcester is, is way above everybody else in uh, treating strokes. Uh, what, News, Newsweek, world's best hospital for 2023. It's the third year in a row on that. So, pretty amazing place there under Bill Sharon and his time, and his team. Uh, community celebrations, life returned to normal back in 22. Uh, programming on the square with uh, music has been done by Main Street and doing a, a very nice job with that. A uh, great turnout for Worcester Fest, Ohio Light Opera ran all summer, Memorial Day Parade was back, and Kids Day and Daddy Daughter and, and Mother Sunday has returned return to our community. We are so blessed to have so many service organizations that want to do good things to improve our city. So we say thank you to all who make our community a better place, the Friends of Philanthropy, uh, Wayne County Community Foundation, uh, gave that uh, honor to uh, Dick and Judy Seaman back in 22. Kiwanis held a state convention in Worcester. Uh, Lions Club are, are always busy working on EyeSight as their uh, banner project. Rotary Flags, of course, is one of my favorites just because of the, what you do with your flag project. It makes the community look so nice. So a uh, phenomenal project uh, and raises it to everybody up. Exchange Club uh, is a very helpful in, in creating the fireworks that we share with the community each year. And then the server, severe weather shelter uh, opened in the Salvation Army and uh, they helped get us through a, a not quite so bad weather, but uh, definitely needed uh, help. These are comings and goings. Thank you, Stan Pop, for uh, Wayne Metropolitan Housing Association. He retired last year. Deb Catlett took his spot. Marty Starkey, uh, she has said uh, it's time to 
to hang up the, 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 the role as the Wayne County Visitors and Conventions Bureau. Rob Wells is the new director there. David Silvestri, one of our council members, decided it was time to move his family out to the country. So he had to resign from Worcester City Council. John Ansel uh, graciously said he would come and, and uh, fill that spot until the next election. And then uh, the College of Worcester, Sarah Bolton left the presidency and took a place out in Washington. Uh, Wayne Webster filled in and did a great job as interim. And uh, I guess we're gonna say hello to Dr. Uh, Ann McCall, who is gonna be taking the reins here, uh, I think by the end of June this summer. And now a look back sort of taking a, a, some snapshots of, of some big times here in our city. 2017 brought many good recognitions for our city. We submitted an application to be considered by Ohio Magazine as one of the five best hometowns, one per region of the state in 2017-18. The first year that we could be considered because our city had won this award before. A visit by editors from Ohio Magazine, um, and a day showcasing why we should be the best hometown in the Northeast region of the state, we were selected. Money Magazine called us up and said, you've been selected number 37 in the top 50 best places to live in the United States. Please send us 10 pictures that you think would present Worcester the best to the world and we'll pick one. And then we held a community celebration downtown during Window Wonderland and handed out gifts of tree ornaments saying best hometown and 37th best place to live in the USA. And then Ohio Magazine came to that evening and, and presented the award to our city. So sort of a fun uh, point in time to celebrate who we are as a community. Hard to believe it that doing a ballot issue in 2013 to raise our city's income tax rate from 1% to 1.5% is one of the high points of my career as mayor. We, myself, the admin team, and our city council were convinced that without this half percent raise, the city would start to backslide. We asked the Ohio Auditor of State to do a performance audit of our city to see if there were ways to streamline things to save funds. Probably the best thing we did for it showed that we were running lean and without the tax would start going downhill. A group led by Paul Williams and Brett Deffenbaugh as co-chairs plus our city team helped sell the need to our citizens. We talked to anyone who would listen and our message worked. The tax increase was on the primary ballot in May 2013 where it passed by a strong margin on the first try. I am convinced that without the extra half percent, we would not be the community we are today. It was essential to keep us moving forward. So thanks to all for supporting that drive. Scheffler, also known as Luke, has been a wonderful community partner since it was established in Worcester in 1977 with, I'm told, six employees making clutches. The city partnered with Luke on March 21st of 1977, when the city issued industrial revenue bonds, $41 million of those to help Luke expand and grow. Scheffler has grown over the years to be Worcester's largest employer, making torque converters and working to be a big player in the electric vehicle market. One of my fine, fondest memories was when in April, 2016, myself and Joel Montgomery joined Prasanna Guru Murthy on a trip to their plant in Buell. Justin Starlin and Mark um, Morrison also attended that. Um, so we traveled to uh, Germany and the plant in Buell to meet the leaders of Scheffler and join them in the industrial fair in Hanover, Germany. This may have helped convince leadership to expand the Worcester plant. It's a memory of a lifetime. Next memorable event was celebrating Scheffler's 40th anniversary in Worcester in 2017. Many of the leaders we met in Germany came to the event and Mr. George Scheffler, CEO, joined in the celebration. We are extremely fortunate to have Scheffler as the largest employer and in industry in our city, and we wish them the best in their future endeavors. Presently, they're starting an 80,000 square foot expansion to their facility. A little dollop of Daisy. Daisy brand chooses Worcester or its new manufacturing facility 
June 24th of 2013. This has been one of the best things to happen during my time as mayor. Attracting Daisy was a full press effort by our city team, WEDC, Team NEO, and the Ohio Department of Develop De Development, along with many community members who helped. Daisy was being courted by Indiana, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and so for us to land them in Worcester, Ohio was pretty amazing feat. Our economic development team did an outstanding job of selling our city. I think what won the day is that Daisy culture slash moral fabric is very similar to the culture moral fabric of the Worcester Wayne County area. I think we portrayed a moral and work ethic and honesty that they liked and was comfortable to them. It was a pleasure to get to know the Daisy team and to work with them. It still is. The icing on the cake was when the president of Daisy brought his wife to town one weekend, unknown to any of the Worcester team. They, start, they stayed in the St. Paul Hotel, walked around the downtown, ate in the local restaurants, went to the farmer's market, and drove around the community. He told us that he wanted to make sure Worcester was the type of community that his employees would want to raise their families in. It sealed the deal for Worcester. What a great corporation partner or corporate partner Daisy is. We are blessed to have them here. Dojo, the Chamber of Commerce sponsored an economic development forum where they, along with DVIDEA, invited speakers to talk about economic development. On October 16th, 2014, this event was held and Joe Camper. CEO of Gojo Industries was the keynote speaker. One goal of the 2014 State of the City was get Rubbermaid facility um, back into useful production. Many people were talking with and uh, with and at Gojo leadership, and I felt one needed, or I, and I felt we needed one voice speaking for our community. I called Mr. Camper and asked if we could meet. On Friday, December 12th of 2014, myself, Rod Kreider, and Andre Dordia, our finance director, drove to Akron to meet with Joe Camper, CEO, Mark Lerner, President and COO, Scott Levin, CFO, and Ron Hammond, VP at Gojo's main office. We talked over lunch how Worcester could be a good fit for Gojo and the empty Rubbermaid building. This started the ball rolling. Many meetings uh, took place till February 17th of 2015, announcement by Gojo that they had an agreement with Insight for Worcester's former Rubbermaid building. Gojo announced on May 29th of 15 that it agreed to lease 1.3 million square feet in Worcester to expand manufacturing and distribution operations. It was in operation by December 17th of 2015, a great partner for Worcester. Thank you, Gojo. Today, Gojo owns the facility and grounds and is the world's largest producer of Purell sanitizer right here in Worcester. Many people helped to make this happen. Worcester Innovation Park. We purchased the 5L Farm, 138 acres in 2020 through Worcester Growth Corporation. The land is was and is essential for keeping jobs in Worcester. We probably need to be looking at another piece of property because this park has, I think, 60 acres of land, usable land left in it. And most places uh, are looking for more than 60 acres for uh, industrial incentives. So that's something to going to have to be on a burner uh, and probably moving toward a front burner for folks. Establishing our dispatch cog has been one of the best things we've done uh, since during my years as mayor. Unfortunately, it was one of the most difficult things to accomplish. We have good partners in Orville and Ashland who have been part of that ever since we started the dispatch center. Safety service, police and fire. The safety service center for our police department and fire station two was one of the best decisions we've made as an organization. Uh, good location and professional off of there and professional offices and building a uh, great st step forward for our city. 
Christmas Run Park and Playground, revamped the Christmas Run Playground in 2017. Thank you to the Worcester Kiwanis Club and city team. Wonderful park for the community and the kids that love it. Goodbye Freelanders, hello Merchants Block. Six months into becoming mayor in 2008, and in the midst of our city bicentennial, which was led by Greg Long and Jeff Musselman, and they did an outstanding job in, in that project. So six months into that, Stan Galt called and invited me to a meeting where he told a small group that he was going to have to close Freelanders after 125 years. He then uncovered an easel with an artist rendering of Merchant's Block and said, this is what is going to go in its place. It's sad to say goodbye, but what a vision Mr. Galt had for moving our community forward. There's lots of in-between moments to get into today, but to me, this is the reason our downtown is as strong and beautiful as it is. Downtown streetscape. Managing our downtown, uh, making our downtown come alive. The city with the help of a downtown plan facilitated by OHM advisors and city team, the community and, and community support made this happen. We are the envy of many communities and, and it has brought life back into the downtown. The story continues, new restaurants and apartments, a new theater for things to do, to do and programming by Main Street and Adora Zone, the idea from the Chamber of Commerce. Bell Avenue Streetscape. The project was a major step forward in Worcester in 2010. Many players helped to make it happen. The College of Worcester, Ralph Regula and federal dollars, multiple state agencies contributed to the funding and the city of Worcester contribu contributed major funding and efforts by, of multiple city divisions. A be beautiful way to tie the College of Worcester with the downtown. It was a great project for our community. Leaving a legacy, the Duchess of the downtown, Ms. Sondra Hall retires in 2020 after 30 plus years. Sondra was the first and only Main Street director for Worcester. She made the magic happen for our city and we are eternally grateful to her leadership and tenacity. Sondra is still helping our community as a leader and helping to get the Lyric Theater in our downtown. Shannon Waller has done a nice job of keeping our downtown strong and programming the space. So thank you to both ladies and the, the Main Street group that keep, keep our downtown strong. Development on Market Street. The excitement continues. New life for North Market Street where Horns Nursing Home was. Partnership between the county and city got Horns out of bad hands cleaned up the site and sold the property to Ray and Associates for an office and property to Weaver Custom Homes for a 10 condo units. Beauty out of a bad situation. So thanks to all involved. What a beaut, Freelander Chalet was a true treasure of our city created by the Freelander family. It served Worcester for many decades as a swimming complex, park, ball fields, a chalet rental for parties and a fishing lake. Time moved on and the chalet got old and out of date. The city took it on as a building project for our PPM team and they breathed, breathed new life back into the facility. Rentals are very strong now for gatherings, wedding receptions and family gatherings. Beautiful facility now, great job team. Trail network for our city. This is one of the ongoing missions spurred by the 2013-14 comprehensive plan update that said people wanted better connectivity in Worcester. So in the fall of 2014, we started a bike trail committee of volunteers and city staff to make the magic happen. We've made good progress through the years, but still have many things yet to do. This has been a good thing for our community. And with that, I need to take time and say thank you to my team. Uh, talking about making the magic happen, this is my kitchen cabinet when it comes to pulling a State of the City presentation together. My sincere thanks to Jonathan Millay, Joel Montgomery, Linda Paulo, and Andre Dordia for their expertise and help over the years. Thank you for a great run 
in our wonderful city of Worcester. And with that, I say thank you for allowing me the time to visit with you, and I'll be happy to take any questions that people might want to to vent. Okay. Are questions. okay. Thank you very much for being our mayor. Two quick questions. One is, uh, are there any <clears throat> plans to get some more EV chargers downtown for the place of public? And two is, has anybody thought about providing any kind of incentives for solar panels, especially for these larger businesses that have acres and acres of, of that growth? Uh, the solar panels probably is the easier of that. Uh, the federal government has all kinds of uh, different types of grants and funding uh, to help defray costs of, of solar panels. Uh, so I, I think it's probably best left in, in their world because they, they've got the deeper pockets to do that. Um, we, we really don't have any incentive uh, wising. Uh, solar panels uh, for, for projects that uh, I'm aware of. I don't know if uh, Jonathan, uh, you or Joel can think of any that we, nothing with solar panels at this point. So um, that could be a possibility, but again, I think it's probably best left in the, in the nation's uh, funding line. Um, the electric vehicle charging stations, uh, we, we have uh, records, uh, daily records of usage on those. And so I, I don't know, Joel, are we seeing anything uh, spiking up or is there still availability in those? He, he said that they're not overtaxed at this point, uh, but we do see some increases. And in, uh, I think we have six charging stations in our downtown. Two of them are the high speed chargers, like the Teslas and those kind of ones we use. Um, I know that Myers has put in some charging stations up there. I know the hospital has put some uh, charging stations in up at their campus too. So I, if, if we see a need, yeah, we, I think we'd probably uh, look into some more charging stations if, if the need is there. So, so nice question. Thank you. All right, thank you again, appreciate it. I think we all agree that the city working with the chamber, Main Street and Wake and Abenzell Council have done an outstanding job of keeping our city moving forward. And we know that your successor will probably do the same thing. But Bob, thank you for your years of service as our mayor. Thank you, Greg, appreciate it. Bob's a point in, we're going to give him this anyway. And that's the appreciation for you being here today. Maybe my students at the very top. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that's probably the longest program you're going to see while I'm president. Uh, <laughs> I but, had to uh, beg for extra time. So it was worth it. It was worth it. And we we were second after city council, so we can't complain too much. Uh, next week's program is Greg Shia. Yeah, I believe Greg is here at the back of the room and we'll be going over the Lyric Theater Project, which is the next piece in the downtown economic development package, which is, which is fantastic. So we're looking forward to hearing from Greg. Uh, don't forget that this Thursday is the wine and bourbon tasting at Greystone at 6.30. Uh, March 20th, reminder, is our Monday meeting and it'll be at Lowry Center, the newly renovated at the College of Worcester. That should be real interesting. I was just there last weekend for the dedication. Place is really, really amazing. So I think you'll enjoy seeing it. Ron Holtman wanted me to remind the uh, Oak Hill Park Committee will be meeting here right after the meeting. And Chris Pycraft wanted me to remind everybody that the every Rotarian every year um, is coming along well. We're doing well, but it'll, uh, cut off as, uh, on March 13th. So if you haven't responded, please try to do that in the next week or so. And I guess at this time, uh, you guys have a safe week and we stand adjourned. Thank you. Good